Yeah, g'day, it's Ricky Somerville here. It's about uh, two weeks into spring in Canberra, Australia, uh, 2012, and my bees are in the front yard and doing okay. Looks like they've made it through the winter. The box on the right is full of, oh, I don't know, it's full of honey, but it's got a, quite a bit of honey in it. The one on the left isn't uh, got so much. I'm going to open it up very soon. Uh, not today, maybe, because it's a bit overcast and not too too good probably for opening up hives. I'll wait for a nice, really warm day, so hopefully next few days. I'm going to do a bit of an update. This is going to be, hopefully, not too long. Uh, my new IBCs for the next part of the expansion. See up there. Um, this is my Ware hive that me and um, my mate Darren built. Pretty cool paint job, huh? There's an entrance there which is 200 by um, by 10 millimeters. That's the the uh, height recommended in the uh, book. And everything's made out of pallets, the whole lot's made out of pallets. Uh, that's one unpainted with the super box, and there's um, a couple of bases, there's three bases there. Um, these are all sides, uh, the long, there's a long side and a short side, and they just go together. There's the top box. It's got a, a metal top on it. And if anybody's into aquaponics, would know that these come off the side of IBCs. You see the Schultz sign there. Well, that's what's on here. You can probably make out it says Schultz there. Um, probably got to seal up this little edge here because that's where the, the envelope goes in there. Um, so I can take that off, and then there's a, a quilt box underneath, and we might have to do some modifications on that, and we're starting to develop, uh, we'll make a, make these top bars for it, there's a couple of ideas we've got here, I think we're going to go for this other idea, this, this idea, see how it's got a like a, a, a place for them to attach their comb to. I reckon that's the go. Anyway, I'll keep going. Otherwise it's going to be a long video. I'm going to try not to make it long. <laughs> try not to make it long. Um, I'll go down and show my worm farm. That's the worm farm. I haven't actually shown it before. And there's all the worm weed coming out of there. Oh, they reckon called, it's called worm tea, maybe. Um, I'm just emptying it into there. I've got to work out what I'm going to do with it. I'd like to try to put it into an irrigation system of some sort. So being spring, we've got camellias out. Uh, magnolia trees. Got flowers all over it. There's a peach tree of its flowers and that one with the white flowers that's a walnut tree and the apple tree down there hasn't, hasn't got its flowers yet um, we'll walk up through here I've got this idea of making um, a uh, like a place like a fire pit like a rocket stove space heater chickens in there growing up. They're the chicks we had. Uh, I think the big one there we're going to call Thorpey because she looks like a big swimmer or something. Uh, here's a big hole in the ground. Uh, I've still got to keep digging but I've got two IBCs in. Uh, there's all the plumbing <coughs> you can see. There's uh, four pipes there, two inlets and two outlets. I'm going to put uh, elbows on these 
and put them into this tank so they'll come in at various points uh, this one here will butt up to the third IBC so it goes nose to nose and um, that will continue on back down to the fourth one and then from the fourth one down into where the ducks will probably end up going into a, like a big sump um, I had some problems with my greenhouse as well these uh, panels are deteriorating pretty quickly and uh, you can see it's deteriorating pretty badly I don't know whether I must have put it on the wrong way around I don't think I did but anyway uh, I had a storm the other night and it actually blew out and I've put a, a batten on the other side and put some screws in there to save it for now this tree we're going to have to move it's another magnolia tree um, so there's the tighty tub sitting on top this is how I'm going to do uh, just out of the pallet and look in there you can see all the outlets and whatnot. I've put a that one up on the right there that's actually um, goes on a, on a on an elbow and it's just under the soil here because I think what I might do eventually I haven't told my wife this yet but anyway is put uh, maybe a whole series of bathtubs right along the wall right along this wall eventually and that'll be pretty cool Nashy pairs of uh, all got their buds. There's another view of the magnolia tree. Um, this is going to be on video again, isn't it? Uh, plum tree got its blossoms as well. Uh, I don't know what this tree is, but the bees go nuts over it when it's, it has like a purple flower. Um, the the bed that the trout are in. This system, remember, is still um, by itself. With the trout in it. Get all this kale and silver bead and some broccoli in there. It's all starting to come good now. Now that it's warming up a little bit. Um, now I've got problems. I've got pretty big problems here. I'm pushing the system a little bit too hard. I've got too many fish in there and I've, I've been having a lot of uh, fish deaths with uh, silver perch. This is my silver perch tank. Uh, so what I've done, um, I started soling the tanks and didn't make much of a difference. And then I used um, potassium permanganate and it like overnight just seemed to stop the fish death straight away. So uh, this is the stuff. I got that from the chemist. It cost 10 bucks or 50 grams. It's pretty expensive. It shouldn't be. I got some on eBay as well, but I got that because I didn't want to wait. And this was like three times cheaper. Go the expiry date is like next year, whereas this is 2017. This one here says it's for horses. Uh, so I've done two lots of. Um, Two treatments of this, and uh, it's a half a teaspoon uh, to a thousand liters. So I've got uh, basically this whole system is all connected at the moment. So six tanks of about six to seven hundred liters. So I roughly estimate the whole thing to be about four thousand liters. So I just put two teaspoons in there, um, and I've got the, the pump running at the moment. So uh, these are the fish, these silver perch are the ones that I'm more worried about. So it's sort of, I just put two teaspoons in there. Oops. I just put two teaspoons of this stuff, and um, I don't put, I don't put very big scoops, just just a little bit. Like that much, and chuck it in, and. It's amazing how purple the water goes. So there's another one like that. The fish don't like it, but geez, I tell you what, they don't die. They, um, it's really good for them. And 
easier to get the sides and, and all that. So this is uh, fresh water from the water tanks. Yeah, so um, uh, they say every four days to put a treatment like that in there, so that, that's, this is the third treatment I've done. Um, I have had one death this morning, uh, but I was losing three, four a day. And this is the one here, this latest one is dead. It's not quite dead yet, but I just put him out here to have a fighting chance or to die peacefully. He's got like these red um, marks on his side there. Um, if anybody can tell me, if anybody can comment on anything I do, just comment because I'm no expert. I'm just sharing my passion, just, you know. Uh, but he's like worn off, so I don't know whether he just had a hard time in there. I doubt if he's going to live, but I'll just give the poor bugger a chance to die peacefully anyway in water. Because they're like my pets, you know. So, although I'm going to eat them if I can. Um, He's, the trout are doing okay, but the water's a little bit murky in there, so I've backed off the feed as well, so I say what you should do is put some, uh, up your oxygen rate as well because the potassium permanganate is supposed to uh, take the oxygen in, in the oxidisation of it, and uh, this stuff, it only... Um, it does uh, break down like in a couple of days or even overnight it'll be noticeably reduced obviously that's going to dilute into these other tanks over the next two hours uh, so anyway if anybody's in Canberra and uh, has a, and has lots of fungus problems on their fish and they can't get to a chemist or whatever just I've got some here and I've got to use it by next year so just come and grab some off me let me know uh, what else can I tell? Uh, what else can I tell? But, oh, put that away. Yeah, these, I had my Aracana, uh, and I've been pronouncing it wrong, they're not Aracunas, they're Aracanas, I've been uh, told. Uh, and check out the green eggs, how cool is that? She's laid three eggs now, like that. And they're uh, in between the ice of brown eggs. Check the size of that egg, that's huge and she's that comes from the boss chicken and her um, her eggs taste better because uh, I think because she gets to the food first and she gets the best pick of all the greens that we give them these all these little ones are the silky eggs I stick the dates on them like that and I didn't know that you're supposed to do this but you you store them with the pointy end down so that's be better um, rightio, uh, one last look at the chickens. There was a comment before about there was a dead chicken in the last video, but actually it wasn't, it was a napkin. I haven't, uh, look at that, how cute is that? Still love your mum, don't you mate? She's gone broody again, crazy girl. And I reckon that's Thorpey. Um, and I reckon uh, that's going to be a rooster, that Aracana. So I'm going to have to, my another project I'm going to have to do is to make a rooster box, which is uh, silent, uh, like noise proof. So uh, yes, that'll be something else to do. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll cut it short right now. And... Uh, Hope you all, whoever watches this video, like I said, I'm no expert, and uh, I'm just I just do this for family and friends and, and anybody who's interested. So be kind to me, and I hope you get to enjoy it. And uh, yeah, make a comment. I don't really, I'm not desperate for subscribers or anything or anything like that. So uh, just uh, I'm I'm quite happy making friends though. So. Um, yeah, be well people, catch you later.